What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. Today we hopefully fare a little bit better than the last time here in uh, the ridiculously massive land of Barpat. That's not to say that we got like our asses handed to us or anything last time around, it's more a matter of this place is ruining my chaos frame and it's driving me nuts. So we got a couple guys that uh, poke their heads out to challenge us. So let's uh, well, let's give Tyler a chance to get some action, or we could not. That works too. Magnus wielding the Levitain. Uh, I guess 142 is pretty good. Honestly, by this point in the game, I would almost expect a little bit better. Okay, well, <laughs> and then Ankaseth crits for 160, and then Met Dio crits for 80. So I guess on the spectrum, 142 is not bad. Honestly, I haven't really been using Magnus all that much lately. He's actually a little bit behind, say, Destin and Fidatch and my Seraphs. Okay, uh, kill dude with Levitane, get Glamdring. That makes sense to me. Shouldn't have any trouble at all wiping these fellows out. These fine stand up gentlemen. 208 damage. Now that is a crit. That's gotta be like a record, at least for this playthrough, that is. Of course, such things are, you know, expected when you're killing skeletons, but still. Those big numbers, they... I like big numbers when I'm the one causing them. I, I don't like them quite so much when they're being inflicted upon me. Okay, now I know Orwell can liberate that place. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. The, uh, the dive... Guy's kind of already dead. Okay, Barry is going to lead the charge to the south, because I know for a fact that this place is lawful. So Barry's headed that way. Well, let's get him a, let him get a little bit further ahead before I send out Magnus to back him up. And once he gets a little bit further, I will also send out Serafina. Oh, and I should send Fidatch to back up Orwell. Meanwhile, Aqua is hunting for my elusive hidden item that I mysteriously have not been able to find. Send uh, Serafina out now. Okay, well there's a hidden item, that's definitely not the one I was looking for, but I'll take, I'll take it. Whoa. Okay, well, I guess you we should probably take a break. And down here, I should probably have you stay still before you get, like, flanked. I wasn't exactly expecting Fidatch to take on both of them, but... Wait, what? I got flanked anyways. That's... That's not good. The funny thing is, I could probably still win this fight. I'm just... Yeah. Okay, well, I think with that, I'm just going to run away. Give me a chance to orient myself, so... The people who are supposed to be in the back row are actually in the back row. Meanwhile, Orwell... You can go run after her. 
No one else is gonna pop out to say hi. Now this is a little bit more of a uh, imposing enemy force. Whoa, combo magic. That's something I can't deal with. It's not something I was expecting, but it's not something I can't deal with. Okay, well, it's just a two-way combo. That's not nearly as threatening. Okay, well, they're nearly entirely warp warped out. Wiped out. Oh, jeez. Um, okay, Orwell, you turn around immediately. Okay. What I think I'm actually going to do is use one of these many dowsing rods. Maybe that can show me where the item I'm looking for is located. Oh, that actually worked. It, it finds the item for you, too? Well, that's convenient. And we find the Lance of Longinus. That actually makes me very happy that I actually got some use out of a dowsing rod. And we liberated Belchy. Are you okay, Seraphina? I feel like you've got in a fight recently. Right, Europia got beaten up. Okay, well let's just leave or uh, use a heal leaf on her. And send you after Hilda and Magnus. You can go after Mr. Saturos. Are things over here? Did that siren just get two shot? Well, that, that uh, unit was thoroughly trounced. I must say, I'm fairly pleased with the way this, uh, this episode has turned out so far. Ooh, a great oblique. That's a nice piece of armor. But, like, last episode was so disastrous. This one's not, not too bad so far. Things are turning up in my favor. And as hard as it may be to believe, I like it when that happens. Dead bad guys make me happy. And the useless item. Okay. Let's go. Down goes the leader. It's kind of ridiculous how fast we can actually kill ogres these days. Perhaps Dio, not quite so much as Angus at. That's kind of sad, actually. I don't know why, but Dio's actually 
being turned out to be incredibly me mediocre this time around. I mean, maybe I just am remembering incorrectly, but it seems like he's always a lot stronger than that. And like, it's not like stat growth is like random or anything, so I don't even really know why. But, oh well. There's nothing we can do about it. How dare you dodge the Dragoon! That's more like it. You should just lay down and die when a dragon attacks you. No, not that dodging garbage. Nice, level up. Okay, now that is the last enemy that we have to deal with. Phoenix Rogue, huh? Eh. Just do whatever. Now, there'll probably be more stuff popping out if I took this stronghold, but for the sake of my Chaos Frame, I'm going to abstain from doing so. Now then. The enemy leader for this battle is a lady by the name of Mil Murray. Bill Murray? And... She is a Gorgon, which is uh, a rather unpleasant type. Uh, as the stories will have you believe, they are fairly good at turning people to stone. Gonna let Magnus generate a little bit more uh, endurance, regenerate his fatigue, however you want to phrase it. Now, Gorgons are an interesting breed. Uh, they have two different types of huh? Let's try that again. Oh! There's a love and peace there, apparently. What do you know? So, uh, Gorgons have two, two different attacks. On one hand, uh, they're similar to an archer in that in the middle and back row they will use um, a shoot attack where they just shoot their bow at you. In the front, though, they will use a an attack called gaze of stone or something like that and it's basically an attack that will attempt to put the entire unit to uh, turn the entire unit to stone and if you thought cockatrices were bad they're nothing compared to that obviously of course they only use it once per turn or uh, once per engagement so there's that but now, uh, the reason I'm sending Barium in first is because Gaze of Stone actually doesn't work against enemies uh, who have a shield. At least, I'm, I'm hoping this that's what, I'm, what the case is. I'm fairly certain that's the way it works. So having a row of Paladins in the front to block the Gaze of Stone should fix things and make them work and stuff. Another alternative is if you um, run around the back and fight her so that her unit is backwards, she won't use ga Gaze of Terror, that's what it's called. Okay, so it doesn't protect your back row, but the Paladins are all immune to petrification. So yeah, if you, if you go around the back, uh, she won't use Gaze of Terror, she'll use Shoot instead. The problem with the only problem with that is the fact that her bow is actually also capable of petrifying you. So that's something you have to be a little bit wary of. Just send in some guys with shields though, and you're all good. My uh, angel knights, or uh, seraphs rather, would be a good alternative too because they have uh, full size shields. I don't think buckler like half shields will work uh, to block the gaze of terror. So there's that. And for beating her, we get the, however you pronounce that, the Jigliass bow is how I've always said it. Oh. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So basically the child of the covenant. Oh. Well, that's interesting anyways. Uh, so the petrification effect is actually tied to the Jigliespo, uh, not to Gorgons himself. So if I come here and let's say, let's give it to her. She's been struggling a little bit lately. So the Jigliespo, made from the bone of Jiliga. I guess that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, Jiliga's bow. Hmm. Maybe just say it on the item list? Uh, yes, Petrify Effect. So it allows you to cause petrification. It gives you a chance to, anyways. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that you can actually get Gorgons. I believe it's actually in uh, Bar Path, but there's a very small chance of you to, uh, to encounter one as a uh, random encounter of a wandering around bar path in uh, area investigation. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but that's an interesting tidbit. You can actually recruit a lot of the denizens of the netherworld. If you go over to the Temple of Birth, you can find a lot of like goblins and ogres and stuff. And I know there's a way to get Saturos. Um, I guess apparently you can't use love and peace on them. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, I just looked it up real quick, and it says uh, you cannot obtain a Satros or Daemon in Wild. You can obtain a Satros via, via love and peace. Okay, so I don't know why. The love and peace didn't seem to work earlier, but apparently it does. It is capable of that being the case. I don't know. It's not that important. I'm not really interested in recruiting uh, nether worlders. Uh, you can find sphinxes too, actually. But anyways, uh, I'm about done for today, so I will catch you on the next episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64.